What is up, everybody? It is Joe Granado checking in from, well, this isn't the Nestmaker Studios. This is my home studio. I didn't want to leave a week without giving you guys an update, uh, and I'm not getting down to the studio tonight. So I figured, well, I'll just do it from the guest room tonight. Um, yeah, just uh, before we get started, if you guys are liking these updates and want to know uh, what's going on with Nestmaker, what's going on with Mystic Searches, what's going on with the other games that people are creating in the scene or how to develop your own game, please do yourself a favor. Uh, right in this general area, there's a subscribe button and then there's a little bell that'll give you the notifications when a new video is posted. And that's how we're going to be able to communicate best with you when there's something cool and new for you to check out. Also, please, please, please share this video. Uh, throw it up on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram you know, whatever, share the link, um, let people know that this is a thing and that, that things are going forward and cool. Um, so we're going to look at a very small update to Nestmaker, and we're going to look at a much larger update to Mystic Searches today. Uh, Nestmaker right now, the, the main thing that Josh, who's the, the tool developer, works in the front end, um, he's working a lot on the music composition tools, which I showed a few weeks back. Um, that is like making an entire tool all unto itself. It's probably just as complicated, just that one piece, as all of the rest of Nestmaker is. And a lot of it is is just trying to figure out how to organize it visually on the screen uh, for and still fit within all the NES constraints and the constraints that we have and, and all that stuff. Um, so he's been working on that. Uh, and while he's been doing that, I've been really going uh, full forward, me and Austin, on Mystic Searches. So I wanted to show you guys a little bit uh, of Mystic Searches tonight, uh, some of the things that we've been working on. But before I do that, I did pull them off. There was a great suggestion by one of the members on the community, uh, and I did pull them off the music engine to implement this one feature. For a lot of you guys, you have, uh, like, say you have a, a platform game, a scrolling platformer, and you have a bunch of screens, and a lot of you are, you know, mentioned that, oh, what if I forget to put graphics? gravity on a screen and oh then I gotta go back in and is there a way I could just check it or if I could just you know apply it to all of it okay well one way that we made this at least a little bit easier for you guys to manage is it used to be where I'd have to open up a screen go to screen info check to see you know what's going on with it. okay yeah that that uses gravity and then come back here and go to a different screen and check okay yeah that one oh oops I forgot to turn on gravity okay whatever um, now at the very least what we have is if I go to show screen info. You can see this little window pops up and whatever I have my mouse over, it'll show you the basic info right over here for that screen. So for instance, right now it's showing what screen number is it? What name table is it using? What collision file is it using? Um, what screen type is it? What bit, what screen bits are flipped? Um, the user bytes are completely going to be different from module to module. For, for Mystic Searches, they're actually what controls the animated tiles. You might use them for something completely different. Uh, some of you guys have talked about, how can I have multiple warps on my screen? Well, here's a way. You can assign these uh, screen bytes to do sort of whatever you want them to do uh, if you can figure out how to code it. So now, anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that. I think it's a really cool feature. It was a really good idea for those of you guys who mentioned it that you wish you had a solution while you were looking at the map view. The other thing is, instead of having to go into each individual individual screen to access that screen info to make changes. You can right click, edit screen info, and now I'm in that screen's screen info. So uh, hopefully that'll help speed up the process a little bit, make things a little less confusing, uh, speed up your workflows. I think it's a really exciting thing, even though it's small. Um, I think it's a it's a really cool development that should help you a lot of you guys out uh, significantly. Uh, okay, so lo after looking at that, let's take a look at some of the things that we've done with Mystic Searches. So uh, one thing that I'm going to make sure that I have is I'm going to make sure I've got all my magic unlocked, all my magic types, and all of my relic types unlocked. So I, now that I've got that and I've got that. Um, it's basically like I'm starting fully loaded right now for testing purposes. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I showed you guys uh, a new selection, how you can select your magic. And instead of it just being a pop-up window or going out to a different screen, it, the crystal ball comes down from the middle and everything fades out and you see the crystal ball and all the magic types around it. And let me show you that real quick. We added to that um, and what we added was... If I hit the select button, it comes down and all your magic types are loaded around. And inside the crystal ball is the type of magic that you've got selected represented by the color of that magic. And what's kind of cool is um, as you go around, you can see the color inside the crystal ball change. So really the color is, you know, there's that, that, that visceral sort of connection to the color that the magic is. And I think, you know, we worked really hard on getting... Uh, the logical sort of color wheel here 
Um, the other thing is, just in case someone was colorblind, uh, we have this little dot that represents, you know, what, uh, what you're actually pointing at, just in case you couldn't tell by looking at it. Okay, so that's one thing. And, you know, what's, you know, yes, uh, I'm going to come over to this screen where there's no monsters. Actually, let me just restart real quick. Okay, so if I come here, um, yeah, the color of the magic, if I look at the uh, crystal ball at the top of the screen, you can see right now it's dark blue. Let me pick a different color. Like, let me pick this light green here. And now you can see the crystal ball fills up that light green. And that's that's kind of cool enough. And if I shoot, obviously, it, it gives a, a projectile that color. But all the projectiles sort of behave differently and interact with monsters differently. For instance, um, the uh, this is sort of your main first spell that you get. And it's just straight out projectile. Um, you know, hurts the monster. Okay. Um, I'm going to restart real quick. If I were to choose this, which is sort of a time temporal magic, it freezes my monster in place. So it's like that monster's frozen in time, right? Um, if I were to bring up uh, this magic, it's sort of a protective magic. And you can see it's sort of a protective spell around me. Um, and if I were to bring up this magic... This is sort of a magic of life, and what it does is it actually steals life from the monster, and and the heart sort of comes to me and refills my health with that stolen life. Um, then there is the chaos magic, which is just absolutely zany. Just kind of goes wherever it wants to go with no rhyme or reason. Like that, that's what it usually looks like. If I do hit a monster, instead of just hurting him, it actually starts cycling through objects it could possibly turn into, one of them being any of the monsters currently loaded for this screen, um, but it could also turn into a heart or one of my pickups or a music note pickup uh, like that. So then I, that's a collectible that I would collect. Uh, another type of magic is this sort of destructive magic. And I'm thinking about making a larger explosion and that kind of leaving a fire trail like the like the holy water in Castlevania. That's kind of the idea. Uh, I just haven't implemented that yet. Another type of magic. Now, I don't have the, um, the decay magic yet, but I will. Uh, the, also, there is the, the death magic here. And the death magic is this sort of skull that, that targets the first monster that it sees and goes right after it. And if you happen to cast it when there is no monsters on the screen, it actually comes after you. So um, so that's one thing to note. So that's kind of neat. Uh, the other thing that we worked on was a couple of the relics for the game, which select and B button, and it brings up my relics. Um, right now, this is the one that, um, this, is, this was sort of by default, in Mystic Origins, where if I have this relic selected, I hold the B button, I can sprint. These are sort of hero's boots, and I could do my stomp attack if I have the boots selected. Now, if I go ahead and attack the monster right now, this guy, you'll notice up here my experience points went up by one. Uh, I, I have that setting in the monster set to one. Um, so if, and I'll do that again real quick, if I have this relic selected and I hit the monster, my experience goes up by one. Okay. Now, if I have this, uh, this relic, which is sort of the book of lore within the world, if I have that relic selected, it, it sort of, it's almost like uh, in, the, in the reality of the game, I'm able to read details about the monster that I've just defeated, and that, uh, that actually gives me double the amount of experience points. So if I have that selected when I take out the monster, instead of just giving me one experience, It'll give me two. So that's another one of the relics that we've worked in. Um, another one is this sort of cherub. And this allows me to float. And that's actually going to slowly descend and also take away magic uh, as I'm descending. And uh, this is going to make it a lot easier to access some of the plat more difficult platforming areas or to get beyond some monsters that you just don't want to tackle that are in precarious areas and things like that. Um, another relic is, and you won't really notice this one, but the, uh, this orb here, this controls day night. So if you have this selected, it'll, the, the game timer, it's almost like a cl the clock stops for the day timer. So, um, the day will stay day, the night will stay night. There are some areas that are easier to surpass, uh, to, to, 
pass at night and there are areas that are easier to pass during the daytime just because the monsters that show up or whatever so this is if you have this relic and you find this relic it's a way for you to uh, to sort of temporarily maintain that it's day or maintain that it's night so you can pass those areas. Or, you know, there's areas that, um, there are some areas that the monsters drop more money at night, you know, and you might want to keep it night so you can go sort of grind and, and things like that. So those are some of the relics that we've been working on. Um, you know, now that we have this this method for the XP, the same thing will work for your strength, defense, and, and magic uh, strength. The same thing will work for how much currency that you have. The same thing will work for how many music notes you have. So that that's a really easy update. And the next thing I'll be working on is actually the music. So when you actually play your loot, um, and we'll, I'll be working on that uh, in the next couple of weeks and then the effects that the different songs have and, and things like that. So that's just a quick look at what we're working on right now as far as uh, updates to Mystic Searches, uh, updates to Nestmaker. Uh, again, guys, if you, if you like this video, if you want to see more, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit the, uh, the little bell for, for notifications and be sharing this stuff. Share it on social media. Let people know about Nestmaker, about the games that we're creating, about the games that our community is making. And if you've always wanted to develop a Nest game, we'd love to have you join us. Please check out www.thenew8bitheroes.com or just Google Nestmaker and you'll probably find us. Um, there's also a link in the description. Uh, head there, check it out. If you have questions, check out the videos, jump on the forums, ask, jump on the Facebook group. Feel free to ask any questions you might have and uh, we really can't wait to see what you start creating with this. Thanks. See you guys next week.